with his former GP here, and he deals with um, mental health issues on a daily basis. So, really looking forward to hearing from professional people here giving us their ins insights. Thanks very much. Now, just to come, to come down and sit down here and just uh, talk to you about uh, men's health in general. So, uh, Roland is my name, I'm from Carlow, uh, grew up here, went to school here. I work in Carlow Town and I work in Rathfilly and Hackstown as well. So by virtue of the fact that I'm male myself, um, I do get to meet an awful lot of men who uh, seek out another male doctor for treatment. And that happens quite a lot in a profession that's uh, uh, female-led and uh, predominantly female. So some men seek other men to, to um, look after their health needs. So I, I hope I don't bore you too much, soon. I'm just going to go briefly over some uh, physical ailments and that that, uh, that men deal with. So um, so when we think about men's health, what we think about, we think about the likes of Sean or, or um, James here behind us, fellas that tend to be go to the gym and are ripped and uh, look, look physically healthy and that's really visible when you look at them. So, but we all come in all shapes and sizes. We, we're not all ripped and we might be fit this week, we might be as fit as next week or the week after. It depends on your life situation, your work situation, your family situation. And, but we have to look after everybody's health at all different stages in life. So, when we talk about health, we talk about social health, occupational health, emotional health, physical health, intellectual, environmental and spiritual. So. You, you try and encompass all of these when looking after somebody. So men have come on greatly in the last couple of years. Uh, we've never really been very good at look, looking after ourselves. We've always lagged behind women. You know, you start school, secondary school, and women, females always do better than you. And next thing, it, it follows the whole way through. So, um, you know, we live five years less than women. Uh, one in two of men develop cancer. We have a higher death rate. We only visit the doctor half as often as what women do, and uh, 30,000 of us die, well not in Ireland, but in the US, die every year from prostate cancer, which is an exclusive disease for males, so we want to uh, uh, better that. So, what is the average death rate for men? Well, in the United States of America, you can expect that they'll live between 78, 75 to 78 years of age. So, for women, the life expectancy is greater. They still live from 80 to 83. So that, this is pretty recent um, information, it comes from March of this year. So if you look at the graph here, life expectancy back in 1845, which was famine time, that was, we were living to the, the life, average life expectancy was 20 years old. Previously that it was 40. But as of uh, 2020, 2018, it was uh, 80. But the current life expectancy in 2022 is 82.66 years. <coughs> so how has this happened? Well, we've had an increase year on year of 0.1% increase in life expectancy for males. And that even occurred throughout the COVID era. So even though there was many people dying from COVID, our life expectancy for males increased <coughs> by 0.18%. So how old do men live to be? Well, 82.6 years is the answer. And over the last decade, since 2009, 2008, uh, we've increased our life expectancy for, for two years by women, but men have increased the odds there to three years. So that's good news because we're doing well as a species, we're improving. So are Irish men healthy? Well, about 83% of Irish men report that they're in good health, but um, that was in 2017. And this ranks amongst the highest in all of EU countries. So we're doing fairly well. Things have improved a lot for us. It looks like we're going to survive. So, <clears throat> so why do Irish live so long? Well, actually, we're doing very well as a nation. And as, um, even though we complain a lot about our health service, we're actually living longer. We're doing better. We have a better um, quality of life. We have. Um, and why is that? Why do we live longer? Well, we have significant reduction in, in major causes that used to kill us before, heart attacks and with the advent of stents, better chemotherapy, better treatment for cancers and earlier recognition of disease. So our overall mortality has reduced by 10.5% since 2008. So that's actually quite a staggering figure. So yet again, we're doing well. So men, so we're going to focus on men and why is that so important? Well. 
you have to look at the different age groups that are involved. Young men tend to drown, be victims of murder, violent deaths, die in car crashes, and commit suicide. The older uh, young men tend to be physically aggressive, verbally threatened, drive after drink, unprotected sexual intercourse. And older males, well, they don't look after themselves as well as their female counterpart, and they tend to uh, involve themselves less in preventative health care. So, how are we doing? About 20,000 Irish people are, are affected with cancer each year, so that is the, the scope where, where as, a, as a nation, we have to improve. So, physical health care, the top 10 causes of death then are encompassed into three sets of diseases, heart disease, cancer and diabetes. So, if you tackle these, well then you should increase the longevity of people. We encourage physical activity. Men are, are more sports driven and exercise recommendations. And the other thing to do is to increase the nutritional needs. So we're more prone to taking alcohol, tobacco, and other products, you know. Um, and we try to, under the physical health, to alter our body image. But some men also suffer from eating disorders. So that has to be addressed as well. Depression, well, uh, there's, uh, that's what the whole weekend is about, so really recognition of depression, men tend to deny it, they mask it and uh, they act it out without getting any help. So suicide is the eighth leading cause of death in men and you know I just take the opportunity that anybody who's contemplating suicide or feels that way that they should contact their, their, their doctor. You know there's lots of modalities that can help them and they might think that there's any way forward, but there is. There's always something you can do. There's always even a kind word, or you know, there's always medication, or there's always specialists that they can be referred to. And you know, it's for a doctor to, to um, lose a patient through suicide. It's gut wrenching. It's absolutely horrific. You know, because you come in the Monday morning, you hear somebody has died, and you know, you, the first thing you think, God, was there more that I could have done, or did he say something to me that I didn't pick up on, or um, you know. It's absolutely horrific, you know, not just for family, but if you're the patient's doctor, you feel that you've, you've wronged them in some way, and, you know, it's really important to seek help, and if you're going to feel that badly about things, you should tell your doctor. You know, so I just, uh, that's just one of the high lights that I'd like to make tonight. So, men then were more violent um, due to the testosterone molecule that we have. We drink more. We're entitled to drink about uh, seven beers a week. Now that's not a night; that's the, the weekly <laughs> allowance. You know, so you know, that's what the WHO recommends. In relation to cardiovascular deaths, we've improved a lot in that, but we still have to deal with diabetes, obesity, um, being overweight, physical inactivity. Stroke is another big killer of men; it's the fifth leading cause of men, and that too is caused by the exact same problems: smoking, blood pressure. Uh, inactivity, alcohol. So by addressing these problems we strike a lot of our ailments off the list and it would allow us to live longer. Lung cancer thankfully is decreasing. We don't really know why but um, uh, the fact maybe that we are, are less exposed to secondhand smoke is, is one positive um, and less exposure to radon gas is, is, is what we suspect as well. Prostate cancer. So Exclusively a male disease um, kills quite a lot of men in this country. One in nine men will develop it, especially if you have family history, increasing age, and as you get older, you're more likely to get it. And men don't like coming to the doctor to get themselves checked out. Um, you know, you have to hop up on the couch, examine the patient, and you have to check their prostate. It's not a big job for the doctor, it's the same as looking at your elbow. Um, <laughs> there's no there's no embarrassment with it, you know, you just, uh, it's part of the job, it's daily, and if you don't do it, well then you're, 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 you're wronging your patient. You have to check the person's prostate, the man's prostate, and that's, uh, that's really it. And it's, a, I always tell everybody, look, it takes 10 seconds, but you can last for another 10 or 20 years if I check your prostate. And usually if that's a no-brainer, they jump up on the couch and that's the end of it. And once, once they've been examined once, they never have any hindrance about coming back again. So, another keynote for tonight is that do get your prostate checked. You will live longer. You'll live approximately 10 to 20 years longer if it's picked up at an early stage. And it is detectable. A man's prostate, <coughs> teenage prostate, is about the size of grape. As he hits uh, 
30 to 40 is the size of a small apple, I see 50 to 60 is a small orange, 70 to 80 is about the size of grapefruit. So when you're examining a man through his back passage, you insert your finger and you can feel the outside of the orange. And you can tell if it's smooth or if it's not. You can tell if that orange has roughness on it and it starts, it feels lumpy, well then that's, there's something there, so you do need to protect out. So that's um, my uh, take home message for tonight. Diabetes, get yourself checked out for diabetes. Um, and go to the doctor really is what I would say. You know, you, everybody over the age of 50 should have blood tests, physical exam, an ECG, and uh, a <coughs> prostate check. And stay physically active, we won't uh, harbour on that point, but 150 minutes of exercise is fine. I would say to stay healthy, uh, three uh, sessions of 30 minutes walk will do a lot for to keep you healthy. healthy. You're not going to be overfit at that, but it'll, it'll keep things going for you. Stop smoking and try and get down to a good weight. Cut out the fries, salt, sweets, steaks. Cut them out, everything in moderation. Nobody's saying that you can't take them, but try not to be um, taking them every day. And then avail of any uh, schemes that the HSE have. COVID is here with us, it's here to stay. There's a new vaccine out, it contains four subtypes, including the Omicron and all the, the ones that we run and scared from last year. So that's only out since last Monday, and you can get that in your own GP, pharmacist, or in the vaccination centre. And finally, just to, for overall health, you know, to stop yourself getting malignant melanoma and skin cancers in later life, just wear some sunscreen. Sexual health is a whole different entity, whether it be same sex or heterosexual relationships. Monkeypox is the, the talk at the moment, it's not that common. Um, if you think that you have had promiscuous intercourse, well then you can always contact the SDI clinic. No need for any embarrassment there, that's what people do, that's what doctors do, and if you don't come in the door, well then they're not doing anything. So don't be afraid to go to the SDI clinic, it'll save you an awful lot of hassle down the line. And Stay active, and that's really all I have to say. If you follow those rules, you're likely to live a little bit longer. So um, hopefully uh, I've helped you in some degree and not bored you too much. Thanks very much, Ron. That was a really positive message. I think that our life expectancy is actually increasing and that uh, there is help out there for us. And we often say to forwards, uh, you miss a hundred percent of the shots you don't take, and likewise, maybe if we don't go to the doctor, uh, we're missing out on something very, very important of ourselves, our own health. So I, I think that's a really important take my message. Let's get down to the doctor. Let's get our checkups done, and that relationship with your doctor is so important. Um, you know, just even from a listening point of view, uh, they're fantastic people. Thanks, Ron.